What if we told you that the next world-changing startup doesn't make electric cars, NFTs, or AI anything? What if we told you they make fat? This stuff, but also this stuff. Drippy, gooey, sizzly, savory fat. As any chef will tell you, every food, no matter how innovative, only tastes as good as the fat you make it with. And this fat delivers. This fat doesn't come from an animal. It doesn't come from a farm. It doesn't even come from a plant. It's made from carbon dioxide and water, just like the fats found in nature. We just skip the animal suffering and the environmental destruction caused by farmed fats. We make zero carbon fats. That means you don't have to sacrifice your meat tooth, your inner cheese freak, or your conscience. That means having your ice cream and eating it too. <laughs> Isn't it nice when the good thing, the right thing, is also the delicious thing? <laughs> Welcome to the start of something truly new. Sustainable food is now craveable food. Savor, feel good fats. So this next company I find super interesting because they use a very similar technology to solar foods. They're using a combination of carbon dioxide taken from the air and hydrogen. There's four different types of technologies so far that I've seen companies use to make alternative fats. First is the microencapsulation technology from Lipid, which we saw in an earlier video. Second would be precision fermentation, which we saw in the last video. Third would be cell cultured fats, which quite a few companies are working on that. And then fourth would be this approach. This video, like the last video, is taken from the Good Food Institute conference a number of months ago in San Francisco. And this is a look at what this company is doing. Chiara Cicchini and Chiara leads business development at Saver, a company on a mission to make sustainable, craveable, animal-free fats by producing carbon neutral fat and oils, starting from carbon dioxide. She is a self-proclaimed food nerd, and I believe she's in great company today. Thank you for being here to talk about fat at an alternative protein conference. So this is like a very small sample of chefs at the Saver we keep on talking to, and everybody says kind of like very similar thing. Taste is flavor, flavor is fat. I do have butter here as well, if someone wanna taste it at some point. But so thinking about this for us has been very much about how do we nail down a product that is the key representation of fat. If you think of fat, 80% um, of butter is actually fat. Dairy fat is very special. There are some alternatives on the market that try to get there, but it's very hard to get on performance and taste. The feeling that I was talking about, how do we get there? What we're looking for is a butter that performs, is a one-to-one -one replacement. So if you talk to chefs, they all tell you these keywords. I want a butter that browns. I want caramelization. I want lamination, I want puffing, I want spreading on a slice of bread, I want the curve. There are like millions and millions of dollars that are spent every single year from companies that are trying to replicate butter on the curve. Because it's something that it's crazy, but like it's something that sells and it's something that people can recognize and are familiar with. And so we started with that because we think that this technological approach does have a pretty key advantage on creating something that otherwise would be very hard to make. At Sabor, we don't use cultivation. We don't use precision fermentation. We actually use like a different kind of approach. Uh, we base our process on thermal chemistry. And so we start from an input, which is basically CO2 and green hydrogen in the form of paraffins. Um, and then we take those paraffin waxes and we basically oxidize them. Oxidation is a word I never tell in front of, uh, of chefs. Chefs don't like to hear that. But what I can say is that we basically push oxygen in uh, this, this wax to actually get a reaction. And through that reaction, what we get are fatty acids. Short, medium, long chains of fatty acids, which we know are the building block of any kind of fat. So with that, we can actually craft what, what we want. And so in our case, we are having fun with trying to craft a fat that very much behaves as beef tallow in the way it melts down and in the way then it crystallizes back or pork lard. And you see like how similar and different these are, like everything is very peculiar. I could double click on the beef tallow and see like how a corn fed beef actually has a fat profile that behaves very differently from a grass fed one. So it's very, it's very specific. Nature got very, very deep into the details on that. But we do believe that starting from these building blocks is actually something that uniquely we can achieve.
And then another example is actually what you see in this butter is, say, is, is milk fat. And so the fat that you find in dairy products and you find in, 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 in butter as well. And so you see how it melts, it melts down in a very unique and specific way and how it gets back in terms of recrystallization. And this is a work in progress, but like all the work is basically that we can do with these building blocks is around uh, mimicking that. And so we decided to really start with this dairy fat um, and to put it in a perfect vessel for dairy fat, which is butter. Um, so this is not on the market yet. We're going through a regulatory path. So it's something that, again, someone can, we have a hack here. We have like a version that is actually made with food grade fatty acids that could be, could be tasted, which is how we are getting feedback uh, from very, very early, early on. But this we think is something very special because it's animal free, it's dairy free, it's nut free, which is something you usually don't find in alternative butters. And since we can get this melting profile and we can get closer and closer, uh, we can actually improve on something that usually vegetable oils don't get to. Botanical oils come with a preset, predefined set of characteristics that are usually very hard to change. And in this case, we are basically, we are very movable, we're very improvable while fighting something which is very static, which I think is one of our advantage here. And so everything that keeps us up at night and we are kind of like nerding about now when it comes to this butter is how we, we get closer to the melting profile um, when, they are, when the butter is on the pan or how do we get closer to the mouthfeel. This is very interesting actually. Uh, this is like the difference of solid fat and liquid fat and how it change in temperature. And that's very interesting because what happens here is like at 37 Celsius, which is the, our body temperature, there is like the last, the very last change of state of butter, which is the reason why when you put like animal fat and especially butter in your mouth, you actually have like, you have a feeling and you feel like there is a couple of seconds where like butter stays in your throat, on the back of your throat. And that's not an, a vegetable oil characteristic, but it's very much what we're going after with, with that. Uh, or workability, how much strength do we need to actually spread on a slice of bread. So uh, we're getting pretty nerdy on this aspect, which uh, is probably what I wanna drive home, I think with, with this conversation here, like in order to win, we need to hit price. Can you talk about production costs and scalability of your technology? And what major cost bottlenecks do you see the alternative fat industry facing? And uh, do you see a future where you can make metric tons of your product? So I feel from, from us, like our process is very different from um, everything else because you run kind of like on a different realm. I should say our uh, CTO, Kathleen, who was the one who worked on the research beforehand, before this was becoming a company, like often says how um, this was basically the, the, the one, the only one approach that stood up instead of like being able to um, get up to scale with no green premium, get to, to play in, in a league where actually we can compete with palm oil and, um, and these kind of commodities that are like 0.9 dollars a kilogram or so, or so on. So I feel like long-term we, we feel very comfortable and confident about our approach. Uh, we'll definitely, it will be like a, a, a journey, like our commercial scale, we look at like being competitive with dairy fat, which is $5 a kilogram. And then world scale, is more like where we think like we can get to like that one dollar a kilogram. Um, and the, in terms of like quantity, like worst scale, we're talking about like 500 KTA, so like 500,000 tons a year. So like quantities there, if I'm thinking of a, of a, of a bottleneck, I'm more thinking of like, we need demand for all of it. Uh, we need like to scale up and like to have offtake for all of it, but the technology had proven at scale to actually get there in terms of quantities and pricing when it comes to thermochemistry. Um, how is the product different than traditional margarine? And then a follow-up question um, that was put here is how do we avoid the, tra the trans fat debacle? <laughs> um, so I think um, if any of you guys feel comfortable um, talking more about that fundamental. Yeah, I'm not the most um, scientific and technical person on this panel, but still I can say that um, 
margin is definitely like something that comes up. Like this is the only thing that people can think about of like, this is butter, but it's no butter. This is butter, but doesn't come from animals. Um, and it's very cheap. And it gets back to like what we were saying here, which I believe it's a core focus. Like your first question is what everybody should think about days and nights. With green premium, we don't sell anything. And the result is people buy margarine just because it's cheap. And it does kind of like the work, does it do it greatly? It does not. But still like people are like, it's cheap and it's what I can afford. Um, but still this is different. It doesn't have any trans fat when it comes to like our products specifically. Um, if we talk to massive producers, they don't use uh, margarines mainly for a performance reason. Like we see like how, yes, green premium is something we should avoid, but at the same time, they, know, they don't need to go so down in price to have margarine if the gap in terms of performance is so big, nobody can laminate pastry with margarine. Nobody can have like a puff pastry that is decent with margarine. And so I feel like the main difference for us on that is how can we get to a price point, which is not higher, it's just price parity, but the performance actually gets there. And margarine didn't do that job. Aftertaste. So I'm going to try Saber's butter after this. So I'll let you guys know um, about the aftertaste. So you did touch upon points like mouthfeel, taste, melting points. But what about that aftertaste? Um, that's one of the you know shortcomings of some existing non-dairy alternatives or yeah, non-animal. That's a great question. I feel talking to chefs, it kind of like it very much comes up. What we let me start by saying that what we have been learning is that when you talk to like um, alternative ways to make fats. Texture is a mouthfeel is the first thing that comes up, which is why we have been focusing on that. If you talk to chefs, chefs are like, we can play with flavor all day long. We can't play with how it feels into the mouth and, and mouthfeel and, and melting profile, which is why we are leading with that. Having said that, we know that flat is, fat is flavor. So far, we have done basically nothing on flavor because we really want like a very um, neutral platform and then to work off of that. But there are some chains of fatty acids that do have some specific flavors, like just naturally, like they can. For example, like C4 is well known for having like a creamy, creamy flavor and so on. So this is what we uh, we have been leveraging so far, nothing more. Uh, so feel pretty good about like where we are on flavor in terms, in terms of neutrality. If you have a lard, you'll definitely feel the pork. And this is something that will, will come after, at least for us. Um, but we learned that it's, when it comes to fat is mainly texture and flavor comes as a workable thing that otherwise you would not have to do. Like if you don't have texture, we don't even talk about it. What is the butyric acid content of your butter fat? You know it off the top of your head? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Selena with Mistam. Um, I have a question for you. Um, 10, 15 years ago, um, there were some new biotech ways of making oils that didn't really take off commercially. So can you speak to what is the sentiment for the food giant? I'm talking about CPG companies, union players. Are they motivated now to change their ways? If I'm understanding correctly, 15 years ago, there was a wave, but it didn't take off. And so you're asking what's different now? Um, for our specific case, we think what's different is, different is that we can get to like those massive volumes that those companies are looking for. Now, there is a reason why I'm working at a startup and I'm not working at a big company. It's like, we know that we have to de risk the technology and package it to them. They will not be the one breaking through. They'll somehow like the status quo. Uh, and so there is definitely some work to do. I'm not saying this is easy, but I'm saying that like, I think technology advanced on that in terms of like price points and so on. And the pressure from consumers as well. Like the pressure that those companies had 20 years ago is not comparable to what they have now. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.